The title is Taking Exception to Exceptional Exceptions. <laughs> yeah, that's actually correct. Um, <laughs> so, um, b before that, um, I love exceptions. Okay, don't, don't get me wrong. Uh, I think it's a great way to um, transfer information from the point where we figure out there's a problem to the point where we know what to do about it. The problem is that um, the amount of information we transfer by default is not very verbose. We, we um, stood exception has a single what? Um, some of the standard library uh, uh, extensions have more information if you want to catch them specifically. Nobody is obligated to use std exception, so you can throw anything. Um, but that's not the main problem I'm facing here. The main problem is that you only get to put information on the exception object at the point where the exception happens. So, um, how do we fix this? That's usually not enough information to debug. Um, other languages use backtrace. So uh, Java, Python uh, have uh, backtrace on the exception object, uh, which can give you the, the path to the exception point. Here's the thing. First of all, std exception does not. So discussing whether it's good or not is a kind of moot. But the thing is, uh, backtrace doesn't work well with a, a release build because of uh, frame pointer optimizations. And uh, it doesn't help build loops. So we have an initialization loop, uh, and we get a bunch of paths, and we try to open all of them, and one of them fails. Thing is, even if we were going to save the paths, the backtrace for all of those opens is identical. Nothing here saves the context of which iteration of the loop actually failed. So there's a solution, of course, of sorts. I call it catch and release. Um, <laughs> we um, so, uh, put our own exception object, uh, and um, we catch, add context, and rethrow. Anyone here likes this? No. no. Right. So uh, just uh, a point. Um, you don't have to use a special exception object. You can use uh, a throw with nested in order to augment several exception types together. Doesn't matter because <sighs> specific exception class, not necessarily, but it is intrusive. So introducing exception context class. This is how it works. Um, in interesting points, at interesting points in the program, and it's up to you to decide what an interesting point is, you instantiate a local variable. That's it. On the happy path, that's all you do. You can uh, instantiate multiple of those, nested, not a problem. Um, if no exception was thrown, that's it. That's all that happened. At the catch point, uh, by the way, this is... Um, uh, inspired by work I did when I thought I would develop a programming language. <laughs> so uh, long live abandoned projects. Um, at the catch site, you can ask for dump trace. And that, uh, so code looks something like this. Uh, um, at the main, I, I put it in a, a context. At the open site, I put another context. And uh, at the catch site, I do dump trace. And when I run this, I get the exception. So that's the standard uh, uh, C++ exception. No changes at all. And then during the unwind, um, the uh, thread local storage gets a vector with all the contexts that were in the unwind chain. And those are printed here in sequence with the parameters that were added. So not intrusive. There is some, some overhead, but it's basically initializing a local variable, copying the static string in, 
n if you added parameters, copying them in. That's it. Thank you. Uh,